today is going to reach 20 degrees, so uh, a bit cooler, which is nice to work in. Uh, cool nights, uh, 4 degrees last night. Uh, today, we're going to be digging a hole to fit the post for our new security camera. Uh, today, I've got a little bit of help, uh, a bit of casual labour from the village with my friend Dalbador. Abla okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to prepare the digger. Dalbador's going to do a bit of a work somewhere else, and then what we're going to do is I'll bring you back in when we start digging the hole. Okay, so that's the plough off the digger and the digger up to the top near to where we want to position the post. So, if we walk around here, I want to put the post just down there. Lots of reasons for why I wanted to put it there. We considered lots of different options. As with most things, this is a bit of a compromise. It's the best of a bad lot. So, what I'm going to try and do, strap those branches back on that little uh, pine tree and see if I can shoe on the digger into here. So that we can get access to dig. Not sure whether the ground's hard, soft, rock, I don't know. We'll dig out as much with the digger as we can and then I'll have to send Salvador down the hole, probably with a kangaroo hammer to make it deeper. I'm looking for around about eight, 80 centimetres deep, should do a 80 centimetres by 80 centimetres hole. Uh, that should hold it in well, but we'll see how hard the ground is. Obviously, if the ground is really soft, we'll have to go down deeper. Okay, so that's the tree strap back as best I can. Now I'm going to try and shoe on the digger down into this gap. Okay, that seems to have got it. So we'll see if we start digging. get sort of 20 centimetres of concrete between the post and the bank and then the rest of this side big boulders and concrete I don't think that post is going to go anywhere so I'll just let Salvador finish cleaning out the bottom of this and then what we're going to do then is we're just going to offer the post up without the camera first to get our levels and see how much we've got to cut off the top because I want the post to finish sort of four metres higher than this the level that this little pine tree is on I've just come down below to film to give you some idea of height quite a steep bank up there and that might seem a, a difficult place to put it but the problem I normally find is it doesn't matter how much you try and plan something and where to put something in the end at some point it's going to be in your way so one of the reasons we're putting it here on the edge here is the chance of it getting in our way at a later date is highly unlikely we're not unlikely to ever do really much just there another reason is it's going to make it very difficult for anybody to come in behind the camera and hit it with a stick or do anything to it 
which is the reason why we, one of the reasons we decided to put it there rather on the bank across there on the other side. Another reason we decided not to put that bank across the side is because it'd be facing the sun as well. Okay, so we're going to have a quick sandwich, a quick break, and then what we're going to do is we're going to try and lift with the digger, lift the telegraph pole into the hole and offer it up and uh, get some measurements and some levels worked out. Okay, so that's the telegraph pole we're going to mount it on. I think probably we're going to cut some of the bad off the end here. And I'm thinking we're going to cut probably about here, just past these knots, because these are going to be hard to screw into, and the camera will go on top there. I'm thinking I'll measure about halfway, thinking that the post at the bottom is going to be heavier, and screw some eyelets in. It'll give us something to connect the digger and the straps to, or the chains to, and lift the post up. It'll also give us something to strap to with stakes to keep the uh, post in place later whilst the concrete sets. Okay, so what we've done is we've lifted the telegraph pole onto this block here so that it's sort of finding its point of balance, so, so it's seesawing evenly, hoping to have a little bit more weight this side of it than this side. So what we've done here is I've screwed two small eyelets in. So hopefully we'll be able to get a shackle in there and a cargo strap onto the bucket, the digger, and hopefully we'll be able to lift it up and into the hole. So what I'm going to do is we'll connect it up, we'll get over to the hole and I'll bring you back in then. Okay, so we managed to get the uh, post in the hole. What we're going to do now is uh, readjust the chains of the bucket, the digger, try and lift it up straight and plumb. And then we're going to take some levels and some measurements. Like I said, I only want this post to be four metres above the bottom of this tree level here. Okay, so we've got that in, more or less. We haven't levelled it or anything. It's good enough for us to get our levels and work out how much we can afford to trim off the top of the post. Yeah, it fought us a little bit there. Got a bit dangerous for a moment. Uh, it's a shame I didn't video it, but I, I couldn't find a connection from a tripod this morning, but it really would have been good footage. Okay, so I'm going to get the bits to level it off and I'll bring you back in after. Morning. It's uh, the next day from the day we uh, did the hole from here and put the post in, see if it's fit to plumbing. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to denial these nails, cut off the bits of the post that I don't need for the chainsaw, and then we're going to treat it prior to putting it in the hole tomorrow. Okay, so yesterday we marked where you want to put. On the bottom here we just the little bit of banking there. That off of the chainsaw. Okay, so as you can see we've uh, now got good wood here. Looks also like it's been treated all the way through. I suspect uh, these posts were probably put in actually into a creosote bath or something similar. Soaked for probably a week before they were actually used. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the other end and, uh, and cut the excess that we don't need up the narrow end of the post. Okay, so I've, I've marked this here. This is excess that we don't need. So if we put here, when it's in the hole, we'll have exactly four metres higher than the base of where the little uh, pine tree is, the camera to be mounted. Now I'm going to give it all a quick wash off. Any excess dirt that's stuck to it, I'll get off the dust, I'll get rid of it, prior to putting the diesel on. Okay, so that's all the dust washed off and all the dirt off the post. Well, I did forget to mention earlier, I'm just going to quickly sand any rust splinters off the end of this trunk here so when we are handling it, it will get stuck in our hands. Okay, so I'll sand the edges here. Okay, that's that. 
angle. And now the fat end that's going into the ground. Okay, so all I've got here is normal white diesel. I'm going to spread this on with this brush or paintbrush onto the post, paying particular, particular attention to getting down into these cracks some of us have made over the years. Okay, I'm now doing the second coat. This is going on really easy now. So obviously the first coat is soaked right in because this is spreading really easily now. So sort of, I'm of the opinion that diesel's diesel oil is definitely soaking into the wood. It's got to work as a preservative. The, the other option was old motor oil. I've got lots of old motor oil because I've got lots of machines that I have to change the oil in. And I save it to lubricate the chain in my chainsaws because automobile ones, I do a lot of chainsaw work. So uh, even though it's so good for motor vehicles, it's perfectly all right to put in your tank of a chainsaw if I filter it a little and, uh, and use that to lubricate the chain. So I'm going to finish this and then we'll be done down here for the day. Okay, so we're finished. Um, that's about 10 litres of diesel at about 134 litre, I think it was that last diesel I bought. So I'm happy with that. Quite like the colour. I don't know whether it's going to say this colour went dry, but I quite like the colour it's made it as well. So certainly an alternative to expensive wood preservative. Especially being it's going outside, we're not going to be able to smell it sat in the corner there. So, okay, we're going to finish here and dip into the town, get some more supplies ready for putting the post in the ground. Good morning and welcome back. Today's the day when hopefully we get the camera on the post check that it's working and then erect the post into the hole and get it concreted in. Okay, so that's the camera back on, camera switched on, solar panel plugged in. Just going to tack a few clips, all this cable that, onto this post here. Okay, done. So all that remains to be done now is I'll get my phone out, I'll connect to the camera, make sure it's working, because the last thing I want to do is get this right up on the post, find I've got a problem. So we seem to be connected. I'm now controlling it and moving it with the mobile phone. Okay. So I think we'll start working, we'll leave that. So we're ready to put it back up into the hole. So we've put a bit of gravel in the bottom of the hole to a drainage from the base of the post. Is that if it does happen to get damp down here, we don't want the base of the post lying in watering and, and rotting. We've also put a block there 
to give us a space away from the bank. We're going to put the post fairly close to the bank because the bank offers the most support. So we only really need about 20 centimetres of concrete between the post and the bank. Most of the concrete and the support is going to come this side where the hole is less deep and there's less support. So I'm going to go and spot the digger up and get that up here, get the chain row in the post and I'll bring you back in when we start to lift the post in. So that's the post in, we've uh, put some heavy rocks all around it just to support it temporarily until we can get a load of concrete in there. We'll leave the digger in place just as a security measure just in case it decides to move. Uh, now we're going to go back to the farmhouse, collect the cement mixer, a, la a large uh, hopper bucket I think maybe, and, uh, and the generator. going to do now is we turn back to the farmhouse to get some cargo straps. Cargo strap are close to this post. The post behind to put a stake in there 
and then try and plumb it in as best I can, bearing in mind that the post is tapered. day now just come back down to check on the camera uh, we've uh, put these straps on I don't know if it was on the video earlier uh, put these straps on just to try and get it in some sort of plumb and upright position and hold it in place while the concrete's set so concrete looks good uh, I think I'm gonna leave, leave that for a couple more days and then repair repair all this bank around here get that all tidied up again Okay, so for now I'm going to take these straps off. <laughs> okay, so that's the finished job. Uh, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Um, I'm going to be testing the camera probably over the next week. I came down here last night to test it, to see what it's like in the dark. The, the lights were working, you can switch them on with the app. But uh, I just need time to get used to using the camera and getting to grips with the app. So before we, uh, we call it a day on this video, I'm just going to quickly show you what the previous plan was for the security camera and how this one single unit has replaced so many components had I done it like three, four years ago when I originally put plans in place over on the other side of the property. So this was a retaining wall we built to uh, hold back the crumbling bank. It's, uh, it holds back all the bank and means we can get an extra three trees in up there. Just gives a little bit more room. Every bit of land that you've got, which is bank, is basically wasted ground that isn't really usable for anything. We haven't done the other side over there because uh, there's going to be a water tank put in there, and I'll disguise the water tank as a wall to more or less match this one. Okay, so the original plan for the security cam camera system was going to be here. Where you see Anthony was standing there is where the uh, the post was going to go. It was going to be a square post with four cabled security cameras. The cables would have run down through the centre of the post and then would have gone down for that red or that blue pipe there. And then that would have come out down into this, this little gap in the wall here. Uh, there's several pipes going in here with draw lines in for me to move cables in the future. Now, what we were gonna have was four cameras at the top, a big solar panel at the top, then in here we would have had to have a, four, a 5G router, we would have had to have an inverter, a battery, and the, the DVR, all in this unit, or all, all in here with a still door in because it's quite nice and cool down here, it would have been perfect. Now not to say I won't use this later probably to put solar batteries in and an inverter, but I'm certainly not going to use it for security system because as I said in previous video, times have moved on. Uh, that one unit replaces all this and now the prices have come down a lot as well it does it at a fraction of the cost so I, I thought I'd just briefly show you this just to know what the original plan was okay so I'm gonna end this video now I know security cameras and making security camera brackets isn't the most interesting subject on the planet but hopefully uh, the series of two videos might be useful to somebody who wants to do a similar sort of thing maybe give them some ideas on how to approach it and what to do or how to manufacture a bracket, bracket, that sort of thing. So, if you did enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.